follow and engage. So, what do you do when you find a niche-specific and truly authoritative account on Twitter? First of all, they have to meet all the criteria listed in Video 5. Assuming they pass with flying colors, you follow them. Don't stop there. This is just the beginning. Once you follow them, you engage. Now, a lot of people have all sorts of misconceptions regarding what engagement means. Some people think that if they just click the heart button that they are engaging. They think that if they retweet that they are engaging. No, it goes beyond that. You actually have to engage in a one-to-one -one conversation with the person tweeting. You click the reply button. I'm not talking about the direct message button. I'm talking about the reply button. Here's where it gets a little tricky. You can't just use a stock answer like, hey, good post, or you're a genius. I admire you. I love you. No, that doesn't work. Those are worthless. Why? And true authorities get those all the time. They're credible. They know what they're talking about. So they get a lot of, hey, good post. You're a smart guy. You're a genius. So what? They get those all the time. You're not going to stand out. Remember, the whole point of engagement is to get on their radar. You want them to notice you. This is all but impossible if you're doing the exact same thing everybody else is doing. Everybody thinks that they're a genius already. Yet, another guy piping up and saying the same thing is not going to register. How do you truly engage? Here's what I do. I ask questions. I know that sounds basic, right? But you have to ask the right question. You have to ask a question that indicates to the person loud and clear that you've read their post. Maybe you click through the link that they shared. Maybe you analyze their tweet. Whatever the case may be, your question must communicate this. Your question must get them to think or analyze or look at things with a new perspective. When you do that, you get respect. Why? You're pushing them. You're challenging them. You're not just asking a throwaway question that they already know the answer to. You're not asking something that they've answered 100 times before. You're basically letting them earn a chance to prove why people think they're experts. Most mature adults respect this. They're not scared by this. They're not threatened by this in any way. Even if you do come across somebody who has a thin skin or views this as an attack, you still gain authority and credibility because other experts are following that person. When they see that engagement, they quickly see that you actually have a working brain. Imagine that. You're not just a blind follower. You're not just another face in the crowd. This makes you stand out, even if the expert that you are asking questions to reacts in a negative way. It's on them. It's not on you because you're just asking a question. Of course, you have to ask in a respectful way. You cannot use loaded questions like, when did you stop beating your wife? Or how was it the first time you got hooked on drugs? You see where I'm coming from? Don't ask those types of questions. Discuss controversial points. Another way to get on people's radars is to focus on controversy. Now, please, don't mistake this for being a troll. I'm not saying that you're going to create artificial controversies. I'm not talking about stoking divisive issues. I'm not talking about any of that. You see, in any kind of subject, there will always be two sides. This applies to niche subjects as well. There's always the conventional wisdom, and then there is everything else. What if there are techniques or approaches or strategies that would get better results? For some reason or other, these are just not talked about. For some reason or other, these are kept under the rug. When you discuss these or raise these with experts, this highlights that you, yourself, are an expert. After all, if you fully explain these or fully describe these accurately, you are basically lecturing in an underhanded way people who are reading your tweets. You're letting them know of something that they may not have heard about. You are hinting at a body of knowledge that either they're trying to run away from or they may have an unclear understanding of. The fact that you tease this information communicates to them in a clear way that you are some sort of expert. Let's put it this way. You stand out from the crowd, and you're not just this random person saying, hey, good post, or you're a genius, or what do you think about this topic, which has been raised millions of times before. Whatever you do, focus on real engagement. This is the bottom line. Real engagement means real person-to-person -person contact. This means picking somebody's brain. This means sharing information on a real profound personal level. This may not be always comfortable. It definitely is not always convenient, but it's absolutely necessary. You have to reach out. You have to engage. You have to communicate. You have to get the point across. This doesn't mean that you have to always be 100% in agreement. However, it means that you do have to always be 100% respectful.
I know this is hard to do if the person you are engaging would feel threatened or get soft on you in the worst way. It's very tempting to fight back. It's very tempting to push back. Fight fire with fire, right? Well, here's the thing. If they act in a very unprofessional way and you keep your cool, who wins? Your brand wins. People start seeing you as an authority. People start seeing you as an alternative. This is how you get on the radar. Either things work smoothly and they agree with you and will love to help you, or things don't work out. When things don't work out, you can still win. How? Through your professionalism. You just have to control your emotions. Twitter is notorious for flame wars, troll attacks, and all sorts of hassles. But if you're able to keep your head together and focus on what you're trying to accomplish, things will work out for the best.